This week, we've got 10 unique deck lists for Marvel Snap players looking to rank up and make their final push towards Infinite. These 10 decks are data driven. They are decks that have data to back up their performance and have been designed using a variety of different sources to ensure that you're getting the best decks in Marvel Snap. Now, one thing I will say is if you'd like to support the content and the series, be sure to hit the like button. It's free and it does a tremendous amount of help for myself and the content. Now, this week, the Living Tribunal has come out. Uh, it's not going to be in any of these decks. So I'll be honest with you, the Living Tribunal is wildly underperforming right now from a data perspective. There is no deck currently out there right now, for the most part, that will not completely destroy your rank. So uh, Living Tribunal, maybe next week as we continue to experiment and design some decks around it, we'll have some more viable lists. But right now, if you're looking to rank, you're probably best to avoid unless you have a brew that's going to absolutely smack. However, we're going to be talking about 10 unique decks and we're going to get started with one of the decks, which is the standard high evolutionary. We actually got two high evolutionary decks. It's one of the highest performing decks in the current meta and high evolutionary accounts for almost 20% of the games you're seeing right now. It is an extremely popular archetype. A lot of people saved up their tokens to buy the card and quite frankly, it's performing. This is like the standard stock list. You're running Luke Cage because, well, in 20% of your games, you're playing against a, um, you know, an affliction-based, uh, you know, uh, high evolutionary base list because people want to cheat out those abominations. So scorpions are coming in out. Uh, naturally, you have the uh, the Cyclops, which does the uh, the negative damage after turn. Uh, you do have the Enchantress to try and get rid of your opponent's loot cages. You have the Doom and the Hulk, which is absolutely wild. And for those that don't realize, if you click on High Evolutionary, you can actually see the effect of all the different cards. The most common cards being used right now are Cyclops and Abomination and Hulk. You're often seeing Wasp used as well. The thing is getting cut from lists every once in a while, but overall, they still are all very viable uh, cards. This deck happens to have a very high win rate and includes a turn 5 wave, which is great because what you're able to do is you can play wave on turn 5 to completely shut down the Sarah based control list, which are still very popular in the meta, especially if you're able to get Abomination down to a 2 cost on turn 5, you can play Abomination and wave and basically completely shut down any control list while having the Doctor Doom or, of course, the Massive Hulk. It's an excellent list that only gets better with the next iteration. If you're looking to rank up, this is an excellent list with an ever so slightly higher win rate than the one we just talked about. This is the High Evolutionary Control Edition. What you have here is the addition of Nebula and, of course, Storm, which is providing you with a good control element with the flooded and flooding locations. Now, although Living Tribunal kind of bypasses the Storm, uh, Living Tribunal is not very common and the decks are underperforming, so you can still play these control style lists with a degree of confidence. You do have the Spider-Man for shutting down lanes on turn 5. You have the excess of Doctor Doom. And of course, you can play the massive 18 to 20 power hulks on a regular basis. One of my favorite things is storming with Cyclops. And then Cyclops continues to poke down your opponent while the storm location remains firmly within your grasp. You do have Jeff to provide you with some uh, kind of additional mobility. And of course, if you want, this deck can also benefit from something like Daredevil, and you can even sneak in a Profex Daredevil package if you so wish. But this, as it stands, is currently the highest uh, kind of win rate iteration of high evolutionary control. It's no secret that control remains one of the absolute top archetypes in Marvel Snap. And Kitty Pride is a core component of this list, which is one of the best decks in Marvel Snap. What you have here is the Kitty Pride Killmonger Nova package, which is obviously, you know, you might say, hey, Alex, that's counterintuitive. You're going to kill your Kitty Pride with your Killmonger. Well, when it bounces back on turn five, just make sure you order your cards correctly on turn six. Kitty Pride is actually pretty difficult for opponents to hit with that Killmonger unless initiative is in their favor. Uh, I love the addition of Angela and Bishop in these lists with Mysterio. Mysterio is a card that I often get asked about. Alex, can you sub Mysterio out of these lists? You kind of can't because Mysterio has a three-pronged attack. Not only do you proc the Angela, you get three additional card plays for the Hit Monkey, and of course, Bishop accounts for three plays as well. So you're getting an insane amount of value with that Mysterio. Ultimately, with a Sarah on turn five, uh, you're able to play your Kitty Pride and a bunch of other stuff with really good effectiveness. We have a list that's coming up soon that is dedicated to Bounce, which I think can outperform this list slightly from like a range perspective you know you can get the numbers higher for sure but the control elements of scarlet witch killmonger shang chi and enchantress are a key component of this list the control side really gives you answers to many components of the current meta when speaking about bounce it's important to note that bounce currently has a very good threshold in the marvel snap meta for power like it just throws up a ton of power it can go extremely vertical at the same time it can attack three lanes on turn six with great effectiveness the only 
only major weakness, honestly, is Wave and Sandman, right? Wave turn five completely shuts this down. The key thing that makes this deck a little different is you have a removal, a lot of the control elements. You don't have the Shang-Chi, you don't have the Enchantress, but what you do have is Bast, which can be an incredible value for this deck. I mean, Bast is absolutely wild. It does a tremendous amount for every card in this list, especially something like the Hood. Most importantly, it's the Beast. What you're able to do with Beast is you're able to kind of bounce back the Kitty Pride. Kitty Pride becomes a zero, and it basically just becomes a free engine for Angela, Bishop, and others. There's so much to like in this list. Piloting it can be a little tricky. It's one of those decks that like you gotta just write off your first 20 games because you're gonna lose most of them. And as you get more familiar with the piloting of the list, you start to kind of get a, a stranglehold of how to actually get some solid wins. One thing worth noting here is that the Chavez is not designed to be played on six. The Chavez is simply to push down to give you a greater opportunity to pull. Bast, Kitty Pride, Hood, and others, specifically the Collector on turn two, because Collector needs to be on the board to get the value. And uh, we actually are running Falcon in this list, which isn't all that common, but with Collector and the multitude of one drops, especially if they're discounted by Beast, Falcon actually does some work. This is one of the most, uh, we'll say, explosive lists in Marvel Snap right now, and one you can turn to if you like putting points on the board. Don't shoot the messenger. I know there's a lot of anger out there with regards to Galactus, but I have to cover it in the list because we haven't talked about Galactus in a couple weeks, and it still remains at about a 9 to 10% uh, you know, share of the meta. It is a very commonly played deck. Now, one thing I will say, although this is one of the best iterations of Galactus out there right now with one of the highest win rates, it still hovers in the low 50s percentile, and uh, I'll be honest with you, it's the lowest win rate deck in this entire video, despite being the second most popular deck being played right now outside of high evolutionary base list. So like, it's a slow and steady climb, I guess, but realistically, if you're looking to gain rank, there are better options. I know that this is a very polarizing card. However, I'm just telling you that it is a good list that kind of wins games but there are so many better lists in this video and uh, i mean if you like playing galactus i mean there's nothing wrong with that as a very fun play style it's not quite as interactive for your opponent and uh ultimately though if you're looking to rank i don't think this is the best choice in this video but it's still if you're a galactus enjoyer it's still viable for a slow and steady climb to infinite all right, now we're talking, we're talking about one of my favorite decks in Marvel Snap, and it's Discard. I mean, I've been preaching Discard as being one of the top decks in Marvel Snap for some time, and here we are with an absolutely fantastic list that continues to overperform. Uh, this is a very reliable list. The Dracula into Modoc combination allows you to play the Chavez on turn six, which gives you a guaranteed proc on Apocalypse. Conversely, if you are way ahead, and you just need to give uh, that Dracula just a little bump up because maybe it's a storm location. You can actually play the Apocalypse and then hit the Chavez with Dracula. So that turn six optionality of, you know, how many points do you need on the Dracula is always a very good thing. This is a surprising versatile list. You have very reliable discards in the form of Colleen Wing, Lady Sif, and of course Modoc, which honestly feels a little required. If you don't have Modoc, Hellcow can kind of do what Hel what Modoc does, but not really. But ultimately, discard honestly is in a fantastic spot. If you're looking to get to infinite, this is probably one of the absolute best decks you can do it with. With the initial change to wave, some people were kind of concerned that like it was a nerf, but it ultimately ends up kind of feeling like a major buff with all the Sarah control out there. And one of the most prominent decks out there that are really doing work in the current Marvel Snap meta is Dark Wave. The idea of using Darkhawk and Wave with leader, honestly, in order to kind of create this like environment where your opponent can't really just play their game plan and you're countering them at every step is pretty fascinating. You have the control elements of Wave, of course, with Enchantress. You do have the Doctor Doom for the Reach. You have the Luke Cage, which is vital for the number of Evo decks you're seeing right now. But the thing I really love about it, honestly, is the combination of Darkhawk for vertical power, Iron Lad for that sneaky and cheeky plays later in the game, and of course your Doctor Doom, which gives you a tremendous amount of reach. There's so much that this deck does right. It's a little light on tech, right? You really only have the Luke Cage and the Enchantress. You don't have Shang-Chi here. So the goal is to simply just outpower your opponent. Uh, the Nebula does not have the benefit of Storm. So there's a couple things worth noting here. However, I do think that the inclusion of a leader, especially if you're head on the board, is a fascinating choice in particular when you're able to get out that wave on turn five and now we're on to my favorite segment the three hidden gems of the week these are decks with extremely high win rates and relatively low play rates so these are decks that have not caught on to the meta as a whole and can give you the surprise factor you need to push to infinite the first we're talking about is iron patriot now cozy and i talked about iron patriot on the last snapchat and we do think this is a very viable list it hovers at around a 62 percent win rate 
and it just slaps. The thing I love about it is the inclusion of the newly buffed Invisible Woman. Invisible Woman allows you to basically absorb the impact of Enchantress, protecting your Patriot in the event that, uh, well, they've got a counter for you. Enchantress takes the hit, and then the cards reveal afterwards not being Enchantress at all, allowing your Patriot to do its work. I like the inclusion of Iron Lad here because it basically just hits everything you want, especially if it hits a Brood because that Iron Lad is going to replicate a Broodling as a 6, which is ridiculous value on the board. You do have the Onslaught, which I like with the Invisible Woman if you can pull it off. A super scroll low key an amazing card now like it's kind of really emerging in the meta as a fantastic choice especially against high evo decks because high evo players are playing their own luke cage so it kind of allows you to not play luke cage but ultimately this iron lad list is continuously putting up points and doing a great work in the current meta at a 62 percent win rate and a relatively low play rate the next hidden gem is a 60% win rate modern moon dino list. Now, I mean, this has some very classic play patterns. If you're used to like your series two kind of uh, gameplay from release where you had the moon girl into the devil dinosaur and you basically just, you know, set up a play where you play moon girl turn four into dino turn five and six. Oh, it was a beautiful thing. But you got more options than just not now because you got a collector that's been buffed. You have an agent 13, which continues to be one of my favorite cards in Marvel Snap. And quite frankly, you have katie pride that's putting up value for the bishops and the angelas of course uh the inclusion of cable is kind of fascinating i think it's a cuttable card if you have J uh, jeff you can include jeff here i think is a pretty good call but ultimately i do think this list is really interesting its win rate is phenomenal it's great and anytime you're able to play something like a devil dinosaur put up serious points i think it's really beneficial uh this deck just does kind of everything right uh, you could consider playing Mysterio as well, but like you kind of start to run out of board space a little bit, right? So I think for Cable, you could consider Mysterio, could consider Jeff as well. Uh, but ultimately, this is a very strong deck that's performing extremely well with cards perhaps you haven't played in some time. If you like insanely greedy decks, I've got, quite frankly, the greediest deck we've ever included in this video series. It is Greedy Jane Jaw at a 62% win rate. It basically like skips the first two turns plays wasp into lockjaw or anything else ideally you want that jubilee into lockjaw and then you just literally cycle nothing but absolute beauties the only weak pulls high evolutionary but of course you got that hulk and of course you have that wasp generating the value as well and of course with jane jaw you're able to actually pull jane foster and then get your wasp and your mjolnir out of your hand which allows you to play both into the lock jaw just bear in mind the change to lock jaw here allows you to only swap one card per turn so if you have to choose right maybe you're going to choose you know the wasp to kind of do that negative two effect and then swap something out or you're going to play the mjolnir to get it off the board and wasp in another location for that plus three in general but ultimately you're getting you're taking advantage of the hulk ability you can get it as a 16 18 or whatever it's just massive card after massive card with the mobility of vision if you pull it out of the uh the lock job but realistically guys it's an extremely greedy list that has a high win rate and if you want to experiment with it you can give it a shot with that being said i got a video for you down below check it out if you're interested in seeing more marvel snap content thank you for all your support thank you for liking the series and for everything you do to support my content we'll see you in the next marvel snap video